Hi everyone, Tyler Manion here, MC and IVB Pro League Vice President. This will be your Texas Pro Recap for Classic Physique, brought to you by New Tech. So in first, we had Gabriel, and in second, we had Mateus, uh, two Brazilians fighting for the title here. I think it was a very, very close show between the two. Mateus uh, came out of nowhere, that's for sure. I didn't even realize this, but I actually judged him and gave him his pro card at the Amateur Olympia in uh, Brazil last year. And I think the reason why I didn't even realize that is because he looks like a completely different guy in just one year's time than what he looked like last year. So very, very impressed with him. Uh, when it comes to him and Gabriel, I think the main difference between the two was the conditioning and the overall density to the muscle that you know Gabriel displayed more than Mateus. Uh, Gabriel definitely came in more conditioned than he did in Tampa last week. I think again, it's a a thing that you you know you see in these pictures and these videos. Basically, to the eye and pictures, he looks the same, but there was a big difference. So it just goes to show you what a difference there is in person that. It just doesn't matter how high quality the cameras are for video or for pictures. It's just you're not going to catch it unless you go to shows. So I know we have a ton of Brazilian bodybuilding fans out there. Uh, I would just want to say I want to encourage you to try to make it to more shows. I think you're really going to enjoy the experience and you'll see more of what we're talking about when we say pictures and videos don't tell the full story. So. Get out there. There's a ton of shows in Brazil. Go support your favorite athletes in person. I know they'll appreciate the support. Uh, for Mateus, I think the main things he needs to work on is adding more density and fullness to his chest. That's definitely his weakest point of his physique. The next thing would be adding more of that density and detail to the back. I think he did an amazing job of improving that in just the last year. And he has all, he has everything there to make this into a very strong pose for him. So you can see, especially in person, you can see that that is new tissue, it's newer muscle, uh, even with the conditioning that he brought. I mean, his conditioning could be better, but you can see that that density was just not quite there yet. I think in another year, you're gonna see a big difference from him. Uh, like I just mentioned, the conditioning, he needs to find that next level of conditioning that's going to add more separation and more detail to his physique when he has that this guy's future is extremely bright i would be surprised if he's not able to earn a qualification this year to the olympia and this was again just like tampa the last week this was a crazy crazy deep show i think you're seeing the display of how deep classic physique is right now and he beats you know these he beat a lot of very good guys one of the one of the guys he even beat was top 15 he was 15th place at the olympia last year and he pushed gabriel to the limit in at, at this show obviously there was only one point uh a one point decision here so three of the judges went for gabriel and two went for mateus that just shows you how close it really was. When it came down to it, it's a one pose difference. I think Gabriel making sure not to hit the side tricep pose and making sure he could hit the one, one arm, you know, front double bicep, front line spread variation that he hit for the classic pose is much, much better for him than the side tricep. Uh, thank goodness for him that he did that because if he would have stuck with the side tricep, I think the result would have been different for this show. So also I want to say that Gabriel even improved his conditioning from the prejudging to uh, the finals because when it's this close, we all, you know that's what the confirmation round is for to make sure you know we're confirming the results that happened in the morning. And he pushed it and came in even even better at the finals to slam that door shut. In my opinion, for the victory. So again, uh, Gabriel, great job. He he needs more to the lower back. Obviously, in the back double bicep pose. He can still use uh, some more sweep to the quads and some more, uh, you know, hamstring, especially in the side leg pose. The same feedback from Tampa the week prior, but I think he posed better at this show. He displayed his physique better, and the conditioning uh, was, in my opinion, much better as well. So, 
Good job to him. I think he has some very good momentum going forward to the Olympia this year. And again, another show where he came out victorious in this one last week, even though he was second, he beat a lot of very, very good and competitive guys. So very good momentum for him going towards the Olympia. In third, we had uh, Dankovia. So for Dankovia, he, his conditioning is the best I've seen him for sure. This is the best condition he's in, but he has to take his conditioning to another level as well, especially with the with the competitors and what they're bringing these days. And he still needs more of that density and depth to the back to make that back double bicep and stronger pose. Those are really the main two things for him. You see, he has very, very full and round muscle size wise. He's very, he's very thick and dense while still maintaining a very small waist and great overall shape. In fourth, we had Laszlo. Laszlo brought really, really good conditioning to the show. Um, you could argue that he could have uh, flipped with Dantovia uh, between third and fourth. I think the main reason why he ended up in fourth, even though I really liked his look and his overall conditioning was, if you see throughout the arms and the legs, the size and the muscularity, he got out muscled in these body parts uh, by the competitors ahead of him. So. Well, I mean, the arms and the legs are not bad by any means. I think he he has a great physique overall. You just see he was getting out muscled by each of the three guys ahead of him. Another thing is he needs to figure out a way to improve his back double bicep pose. Out of the top four, he's the only one that has a pose that's very, very weak, uh, especially compared to all, the, all his other poses. So that back double bicep just really doesn't fit with his his other four poses, his other four poses are definitely strong. The conditioning shines through, but the back needs more width, needs more detail, needs, needs more density. And I don't know if it's just the way he's hitting it or what, because as you see from the front, his front double bicep looks great. Uh, and when he hit a front lat spread, his lats were spread out all the way. This taper looks amazing. He's a nice small waist. It just doesn't make sense why his back double looks the way it does. So. Hopefully that's something he's able to fix because having a weak pose that is really much weaker than other competitors, even though it's one pose, everything is taken to, into account. I think that also is a reason that he dropped into fourth place here, even with the amazing detail and conditioning he brings. So it's filling out those arms and legs a little bit more and improving that back double for him that will, that will help him improve and try to get back to where, you know, break into that top 15 at the Olympia this year, because if you place in the top 15 in classic physique this year, I think that is a tremendous achievement. I don't think uh, people realize how deep that division really is. And I think it's a major accomplishment this year to be one of the 15 best classic physique guys in the world. So it's the deepest men's division for sure. And it's one of the divisions I'm most excited to see play out at the Olympia this year. This will be your Texas Pro recap for men's physique. So in first, we had Jeremiah. Jeremiah came back and defended his title. Uh, the, the conditioning he brought was really, really good. I don't think they, they could have nailed that conditioning any better than what they did. His front pose was very balanced and very detailed overall. Good balance between the arms, the shoulders, fullness throughout the chest. The detail through the midsection was very, very impressive. The abs were deep and separated. His serratus had very, very good detail to it. And the way he hit the pose was very good as well. So great front pose. For the front pose, the only thing I think he can work on a little bit more is just adding a little bit more to the legs. His legs weren't bad, but still adding a little bit more fullness there can balance out that front pose even more and make it even stronger. For his back, the main thing he can do for his back is add more density back there. He needs more density and also just to touch more width as well. He doesn't look as wide from the back as he looks from the front. Uh, the condition he brought really brought out the detail that he has back there. But when you compare it to Ricardo, he was losing the back pose. So he needs more of that density back there just to balance out his overall look from front to back. But again, the conditioning, the detail that he had really helped him still stay competitive, at least in the back pose with Ricardo. Now with Ricardo, 
Uh, the same things for feedback that I've given him, you know, this year he still needs to do. He needs to fill out his chest a little bit more. He can add a little bit more to his lower lats in the back bows. I think he posed his back much better than he did in Tampa a week ago. He posed it much better here. Uh, the back itself, I should say. And the front pose too was a little bit better posing wise, the way he was hitting it. However, he really breathes through his stomach when he's on stage. In the front pose, he did not stay on his abs the whole entire time. Uh, against the guy that has a great front pose like Jeremiah, he cannot afford to do this. So he, he was having a lot of trouble really staying on the abs the whole entire time. When you're not staying on the abs, that kind of throws off that whole entire look to, to your front pose. I think he's squeezing everything just too much. He needs to be able to relax more and make it come more naturally because he's exerting so much energy. I think that's why he can't help but breathe through his stomach. And the same thing with the back pose, even though he posed his back much, much better, I don't know what he's doing or squeezing or whatever else you see his waist, he's breathing through his stomach again in the back pose. And that's evident while he's standing to the back facing the rear. So that's really not good. That's not usual, especially for men's physique that we can see that. That's the main stuff he needs to work on because his conditioning again was very, very good. And he has a great physique overall, even right now, you know, before he makes the improvements that he needs to make, his physique is very competitive. It can stand with Olympians. So that posing stuff he needs to work on. He cannot breathe through his stomach. In third, we have Ahmed from Egypt. I think he did a good job of coming in more condition than he did the week prior in Tampa. Uh, for me, the number one thing is he needs to shrink down the arms and the shoulders more. I think they're, they're much too thick. Uh, he also needs more depth and detail to his back. So he needs to sh streamline the arms and the shoulders while improving the back. It's not an easy thing to do, but he definitely has to do it because for me, his arms, his arms are just too big. And fourth, we had Mario. Mario still needs more fullness to the chest. He can have a little bit more width to the back and fill in his legs a little bit more. I think he brings a great men's physique look overall and he's continuing to improve. So hopefully he can stay competitive and try to earn one of these last qualifications going into the Olympia this year.